Hi friends, welcome to RV Squared. I'm Steve Vance. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the three major categories of supplying a modern day RV with energy. That's battery powered with inverters, shoreline, and of course the generator. So here we go. First, let's talk about battery power. Now, on most modern coaches, there's gonna be two sets of batteries. One is the chassis. The chassis batteries are responsible primarily to supply 12 volt power to the engine, transmission, the main electrical system that the coach is built upon, and that's the running chassis. Those are all driven off of the chassis batteries. We're not talking about those right as of now. What we're talking about here are the house batteries. And these batteries will be running 12 volt power into inverters and those inverters are responsible for converting that energy that's 12 volts direct current or DC into your normal household current. Now it's these house batteries that are 12 volt DC that are responsible for powering up the entire energy system for inside your coach and I'm referring to the normal 110 volt appliances that run inside our coach. So these are run through what's called an inverter. And on the modern day coaches, they're outbacks. And there are two outbacks. And on the older coaches, some of them ran, ran magnums. And if you're wondering how these batteries get charged, there's a couple ways that we'll discuss later on. But once again, in this particular coach, there is a bank of six house batteries and they're all run together so they provide a lot of power but that power has to get put into inverters the inverters once again are responsible for converting the 12 volt dc into 110 volt ac which is what our appliances run on now on newell coaches you'll see a battery disconnect this battery disconnect and the inverter breakers are necessary to turn off if you need to kill the power to the coach and again, I'm talking about the inverted power that runs inside to power all the appliances and lighting inside the coach. You need to turn all three of those switches off. In your electrical bay, there are twin Outback 2800 watt inverters. The newer coaches have twin 3500 watt inverters, but the actual connections and layout is the same. Some of the newer models have the inverter control panels mounted to the floor of the electrical bay but again, the layout and operation is the same. Again, it takes the 12 volt house battery power and puts it through these inverters and then sends it into the coach with 110 volt power. And by the way, these inverters have chargers built into them. While we're on the topic of If it's ever necessary to disconnect these chassis batteries, this is the battery disconnect for the chassis batteries. Different coaches have this in different locations, but if it's necessary to kill the chassis batteries, you have to do it here. And again, it'll only kill these chassis batteries. Let's talk about how these batteries are charged. When you're driving, the alternator goes strictly into the chassis batteries. However, the batteries are monitored. And when the chassis batteries are full and the house batteries start dropping down, there's a special relay in here called the merge relay. This relay will actually send power to the batteries that are on the house side. And so it basically merges the batteries together. That's the same process that some coaches are called emergency start. In this particular coach, there is an emergency start switch up on the dash. And what that does is that manually connects these batteries together to give you full power of eight coach batteries all in one to help start your rig should you have a problem. And again, what that's doing is it's taking the energy from the house batteries and putting it into the chassis batteries so that you can start easier. But normally you want to keep that switch off. Let the coach's energy management system determine when and when not to merge those batteries automatically. And it's done without you having to do anything about it. So recapping, you've got two sets of batteries. You've got your chassis batteries and you've got your house batteries. Those house batteries are wired into these inverters. The inverters convert that power and send it into the coach. So let's get on to the next form of energy, which is the shoreline. At this point, most of you don't need an introduction to the electrical post in which hopefully we all have what's called 50 amp power. 
not every park has 50 amp. And what 50 amp is, is it has two legs that supply the coach with 110 volts on each side. And that will enable your heavy duty appliances like your dryer and your aqua hot electric side with 220 power, which gives it a lot more horsepower in electrical terms. This is a 50 amp receptacle, okay? It should look like this. It may be black, it may be yellow, it may be white, but the configuration should be the same for 50 amp. It's got these three vertical legs and then a ground leg at the bottom. That's what 50 amp looks like. When you see an outlet like this, you'll notice that this has only two lugs up here and they're at an angle. Two with a single down here. That's a 30 amp plug. Here's your modern day post. This is a very nice park here in Grapevine, Texas. And this has not only everything you need, but it's also really well labeled. So here we have the 30 amp with 125 volt. And over here, you'll see it says 50 amp with 125 slash actually says 250 down there. So they got plenty of horsepower coming out of this. Plus they give you a nice 110 volt, 20 amp, and all these are individually breakered. So whenever you connect and disconnect, you should have this breaker turned off. Why do I run this progressive EMS? The reason why I run this is because this has a circuitry built into it. It has a diagnostic readout here that tells me the voltage on both legs. So the voltage on both legs will show me at this point, it's about 117 volts. It shows me the load that's being created on both legs. Um, I'm drawing 34 amps on one leg. Here comes leg two with 117. I'm drawing zero amps. It also has a diagnostic code that should every, anything happen, whether it's a power failure, a dip or a surge, it's gonna show me an error here. Now, this box has the ability to completely disable the power. It's basically like an external circuit breaker. It has logic built into it and it has saved me before. Some parks have weak power and when all these class A coaches with multiple air conditioners throw on at the same time, it can put a lot of load on the park's energy supply and they can have power dropouts and that's bad for your coach. So if something were to happen catastrophically, this box will actually blow. There's actually a fuse in there and it'll blow. So here's the benefit of having an outboard EMS protector like this one. If something should happen where I got really bad power, a spike, electrical storm, something like that where it sends a lot of current and it blows this box, it stops the problem right here. It doesn't let it go to that transfer switch surge guard that's built on board. And most coaches have that built on board. But the problem with that is if you blow something on board, you've got a problem because now you can hook up shoreline power to your coach all day long and it's not gonna it's not gonna work. In this case, if this particular box blows, all I have to do is just take it out and order parts or buy a new one. These are about three to four hundred dollars. At least I can get temporary emergency power by plugging my shoreline back in, taking the risk, but at least I'm able to get my coach's power back. If you had this built in, which they do sell, if you had this built in to your coach and wired in there, as some people I know do, and this blows, again, you're out of power. You've got to order parts, take this box apart, and replace that internal fuse. So it's not convenient. It's worth it to me to have this exterior. Some people are really paranoid about it getting stolen. Well, they give you a lock lug right here. If you're really worried about it, put a cable lock. That's shoreline power in a nutshell. This is gonna be your primary and preferred way of supplying your coach with power. So when you have 50 amp service, all things are bliss. Your air conditioners, all four of them can run, your washing machine, your dryer, your microwave, your hair curler. Remember that when you power this shoreline, that energy is gonna go and travel through the transfer switch, which also feeds the inverters. The inverters convert the 12 volt DC into 110, but now we have a 110 source here. So what that does is it takes the load off those inverters and the battery banks. And what it does now is it tells those inverters, hey, let's use your charger system. And it takes that power that's coming in on the 50 amp and it actually regenerates, or I should say rejuvenates your 12 volt batteries. And if it senses the fact the chassis batteries have dipped down too low, that merge switch merges. So again, the coach's management system looks at the chassis batteries and since the normal charger is charging those house batteries, if it ever senses those chassis batteries get to be too low, then it automatically merges that circuit and bolsters up those chassis batteries 
with the energy that's coming from the house. It also helps boost those batteries by charging them again. And it's all automatic. Okay, next let's talk about the generator. Phew, I do not want to spend much time out here. So the third and big daddy of power sources is the generator. And you really don't need to do anything in this compartment except give some love to this baby because it's a really cool deal. It's a turbocharged four cylinder diesel capable of putting out 20 kW, that's 20,000 watts. Now remember, the Shoreline 50 amp supplied 12,000. This baby has overhead. It supplies 20,000. And that's cool because if you're ever boondocking and you're at a, a rally or a, you know some type of a parking lot event where you don't have Shoreline power, this not only has enough power to supply you, but it can supply a stack or trailer, and you can connect your buddy on the buddy plug on the side, and they can power up their entire trailer. So run this baby all the time. Run it when you're in the hot weather so you can supply all four air conditioners. Run it when you're doing your periodic maintenance as I've talked about before, your monthly maintenance. It doesn't hurt them at all and it does not take that much fuel at all, but it's good for them to keep exercise. These are meant for continuous duty. They put these on refrigerator trucks meant to turn 24 seven. So don't feel like you're putting a lot of stress on these diesel motors. They're built to just withstand constant running. Okay, enough of that. I wanna go in the air conditioning. Now, while each coach is laid out a little differently in terms of monitoring panels, the philosophy and electrical theory, if you will, is the same no matter what. It's just what I call street math. It's just simple conversions. You don't have to get all heady with this and intimidated, but let's talk about simple things like a microwave, uh, a hair curler, things that you can actually see on the side, how much power they draw. A lot of these appliances may have a placard inside that tells you the amount of energy they draw. Let's say for example right here, this microwave takes 1.65 kilowatts. So that's 1650 watts. Now, that's just pretty simple math. If you figure on the fact that wattage divided by the voltage will give you amperage. All right, once again, the wattage divided by the voltage will give you amperage. So let's just use real even numbers. If there was an 1100 watt appliance divided by 110 volts, which is your 110 circuit that supplies it, that'll give you what? 10 amps. So again, I just do street math. 1650 divided by 110, I can make it real easy and divide it by 100. I'm using roughly 16 and a half amps, all right? Roughly, you could use your calculator, you could even use Siri if you want, if it really matters to you. Divide 1650 by 110, 15 amps. So there you go. So let's say in theory, when I run this and it's under full power, full load, I should see on my panel roughly a 15 amp draw. These panels, this particular silver leaf panel, doesn't report in wattage. Most of these panels will report to you in amperage. When you're driving down the road and you need an inverted power and you're not running your generator, you don't have a shoreline, and all you're relying upon is 12 volt DCs, this math becomes a lot more important because as you're running your inverter, your source of power is coming from your batteries. Your batteries are 12 volts. They're not 110 volts. So again, street math, bump up 110 to 120 versus 12, that's a tenth of the power in a battery. So any current draw has to be multiplied by 10 in the world of batteries. So let's say for example, we said this is 10 amps of draw on 110 volts, but it's actually 100 amps of draw on your batteries. Why? because this is 110 volts, the batteries are 12 volts. So when you do the math, a simple 1200 watt microwave is pulling 100 amps off your batteries. So now you understand the significance of a heavy duty appliance, such as a microwave or a cooktop, or if you can power it on some coaches, a washer and dryer. This is a 220 washer and dryer, so it won't go on inverted power off the batteries. Newell has cut that out so you 
you can't do it because it's just too much energy being robbed from your batteries. Okay, well, there we go. We got through it. I know that it is a little bit complex, intimidating, confusing, but if you just look at it with what I call street math, you can get through this and have a really good understanding. It does take a while, but I hope to impart a little bit of that knowledge upon you and uh, let you feel a little bit more comfortable. So that's it. I welcome your comments and questions. As always, I appreciate your feedback and I also appreciate you subscribing. Make sure you smack that like button. So thank you once again, and as always, safe travels.